Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to learn how to solve algebra word problems. Today is the end of our long journey. Today we'll do the very last problem in the series, problem number 200. Problem, as you can see, is already on the blackboard. Let's take a look at it. I'm going to read the problem to you. Then I'm going to tell you what the correct answer is supposed to be. And at that point, you will pause the video and you will solve the problem yourself. And if you can solve this problem all by yourself without any difficulty, that means you have arrived. Okay, let's take a look at it. It says, how many hours, how many hours will our robots take to assemble X cars, X number of cars, if W workers can assemble our cars in X hours. We are further told that each robot works as fast as K workers. In other words, one robot is as productive as K workers. So one more time, how many hours will the R robots take to assemble X cars if W workers can assemble R cars in X hours? And here's the answer. The answer is X squared times W over R squared times K, or if you like, x over r whole square times w over k. Pause the video, solve the problem yourself. If you can get this answer, then you have done it right. And then resume the video and then compare your work against the work that you and I will do together in a few seconds time. I'll give you five seconds for you to be able to pause and unpause the video. Okay, I'll get out of your way so that you can have the unobstructed view. Here we go. Okay, here we go. So what do we know here? What do we start out with? What is our starting point? The starting point, of course, is what we are told, what we know, and what we are being asked for. What we are being asked for, of course, is different, obviously, than what we are being told. And what we are being told is this part. What we know is this part. We are told that W workers can assemble, can assemble our cars in X hours. That's, that's the part we know. We are, we are being asked how many hours will it take to for our robots to make X cars if this is true. W workers can assemble our cars in X hours. So that's our starting point because we know that part. So let's erase this thing here and let's start our solution. So again, this is what we know. W workers, W workers can assemble our cars, assemble our cars in X hours, in X hours. You with me? Nothing startling here, that's what we are told here, there is nothing there. Well, we are not interested in W workers, we are interested actually in our robots. Before we can go from W workers to our robots, let's find out what this translates into in terms of the productivity of one worker. If W workers can assemble R cars in X hours, then the same amount of time, if you were to give them the same amount of time, how much work do you suppose one worker would do? Think of it, think of this like this. If you're told that two workers can assemble 20 cars, if two workers can assemble 20 cars, then one worker must assemble 10 cars in X hours. How do we arrive at 10? Two workers can assemble 20 cars, one, as one will assemble 20 over 2 or 10. If you are told, for example, that three workers can assemble, if you are told that three workers can assemble uh, 12 cars in X hours, then one worker can assemble 12 over 3. Therefore, one worker can assemble R over W. R over W cars in the same amount of time in X hours. So far, so good? So far, so good. If our workers can assemble, if one worker can assemble this many cars, if one worker can assemble R over W cars in X hours, let's erase these numbers now, the numbers that we had plugged in before. Then the question is, how many can K workers? How much work can the K assemble? Why K workers? Why K workers? Because we are told here that each robot, each robot works as fast as K workers. So one robot, one robot equals K workers. So if you can figure out how much work a K worker, 
if we can figure out how much work K workers can do, then what we have figured out is how productive is one robot. And if we can figure out how productive is one robot, we can work on the R robots. So let's continue. So if one worker can do this much work, for example, if for example, if I tell you that one worker can assemble three cars, if one worker can assemble three cars in a given number of times, then three workers should be able to do how much work? Three workers should be able to do thrice the, thrice the amount of work. If one worker can assemble three cars, then three workers should be able to assemble nine cars, and ten workers should be able to assemble thirty cars. It's just times this amount, whatever this what is. So, so K workers, if one worker can do this much job, then K workers should be able to do K times this amount of work. This many cars in the given amount of time. R over W times K because there are K workers. That's a capital K, that's a small K. No, don't make a big fuss about it, but to be consistent, so I'm going to put it in a small K because there we have a small K. So that's it, we have K workers. But we know that each robot works as fast as K, robot, K workers. In other words, one robot equals K workers. Here's K workers right here. So this K workers that we have here is actually, this K worker is actually the same as one robot. So what we have found is that one robot can assemble R times K, again small k, R times K over W cars in X hours. If one robot can do this much work, then how many, how many do you suppose can do? If one robot can do this much work, then R robot, R robot should be able to do R times as much work. This implies that R robot should be able to do R times this much work, which is R times K over W times R in X hours. We're running out of room, so I'm going to pick up from here. We're running out of room, so we're going to pick up from here on the top. We're almost there. So, so let's rewrite this statement on the top. R robots can assemble our robots can assemble our robots can assemble this many cars r times k times r over w which is same as r squared times k over w cars in X hours. Now we're not interested in this many cars. We're not interested in R squared times K. That's the times K. That's that's the K. Small small letter K. We're not interested in R squared times K over W cars. We are interested in X number of cars. The question was, how many hours will R robot takes to assemble X cars? We have the R robot. That we took care of that part. We have the R robots working. But they're here they are assembling this many cars. We don't want them to assemble this many cars. We simply want them to assemble X number of cars. So that's the next transition we have to make. But before we can worry about X number of cars, let's ask ourselves, if our robot can assemble this many cars in X hours, then this same number of robots should be able to assemble one car in how many hours? That's very simple. Look, it's very simple. Make up a number for this thing. This entire quantity, make up a number. Let's say four. Okay, now this is how it reads. If, you, if a given number of robots, whatever the robot number happens to be, a given number of robots can assemble four cars in X hours, listen very carefully, if they can assemble four cars in X hours, then they should be able to assemble one car. This is four cars in X hours. We are, we are, pretending, that, we are pretending that this entire quantity, R squared times K over W, that, that is the quantity. It's a given number. It's a, it's a number. Let's pretend it's four. So if our robot can assemble four cars in X hours, then they should be able to, same number of robots should be able to assemble one car, which is one fourth the amount of cars, in, in one fourth the amount of work, uh, one fourth the amount of time. Why one fourth the amount of time? Because they are, they are doing one fourth the amount of work. If they can assemble, one more time, if they, if they, they being our robot, that's, that's what, I'm, what I mean by they. If they can assemble four cars in X hours, they should be able to assemble one car in one fourth the amount of time. Instead of four, if we had put in something else here, let's let's let's, let's pretend it is a ten. 
If they can assemble 10 cars in this many number of hours, then they should be able to assemble one car in the tenth, tenth the amount of time. In other words, whatever this value is, if you want to build one car, one car is going to be x over this quantity right here. Except here we do not have 10, we do not have 4, we have this quantity, r squared times k over w. That's going to go over here. So they, can, they should be able to assemble one car, they should be able to assemble one car, not cars, in how many hours? In, in, x right here, x over this quantity, r squared times k over w, which can be written as x times w over r squared k. They should be able to assemble one car in this many hours, this many hours. We are almost done. That's, that's hours. But we don't want to just assemble one car. We don't want these robots. When I say these robots, I mean our robot. That's how many robots we have. We don't want them. To, we don't want them to assemble one car. We want them to assemble x number of cars. Well, if one car takes this much amount of time, then two cars will take twice the amount of time for the same number of robots, and three cars will take three times the amount of time, and x car will take x amount, x times the amount of time. So x cars they should be able to assemble in w right here x times w over r squared k times x hours which of course is same as i'm going to erase all of this thing we're done with all of this thing we don't need any more any more of this which of course is same as is x times x this x times x is going to be x squared times w over r squared times k hours one more time, so what we find is that the R robots can assemble X cars in this many hours, which is exactly what we were looking for. The question was, how long will it take R robots to assemble X cars? The answer is, R robot will assemble X cars in these many hours. X squared times W over R squared times K, or if you like, R X over R whole squared times w over k hours. Voila. That was the end of our series. That was the end of our journey. We are done with the algebra word problems. If you want to get better at these, if you want to get, improve your ability to be able to solve algebra word problems, it's important that you go in proper sequence. There are 100 videos altogether. And in those 100 videos, we have solved a total of 200 problems. One more time. This was the problem number 200. This was the problem number 200. But it was the 100th video in the series. Just look for algebra word problems and you will find. In the first video, of course, I think we managed to solve eight problems. As they get more and more difficult, we were able to do fewer and fewer problems in each video. But on average, the average worked out to be average worked out to be two problems per video. Because we solved 200 problems in 100 videos. I hope you got something out of it. Thank you. Bye now.